Good morning, everybody. Hey, it's good to be with you. Hi. <laughs> wow, we're so blessed. Thank you for making us feel so very welcome here. You know, we, um, Kathy and I are both, I, it's really difficult for us to describe how amazed we are at the beauty of the body of Christ around the world. And you know, when I wrote that song, uh, Blessed Be the Lord God Almighty, when we were singing it this morning, that one phrase, we lift your name in all of the earth. I could n when I wrote that song, I could not have dreamed that I would be in the UAE worshiping Jesus with you this morning. So yay. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> you know, you, you, you just can never outdream God in, in his, his hopes and dreams for us are far greater than our own. And so the nations belong to him, and we get the honor of lifting up Jesus all over the world. I'm so blessed to be here with my wife, Kathy, and uh, she and I have been married for 40, almost 48 years, coming soon. And we have four kids and five grandchildren, and we are just absolutely blessed to get to travel the world and be here with you. And I, while I get my guitar ready, I would love to have her share some things with you. This is Kathy. Good morning. It really is a dear, dear experience for us to be here with you. You have no idea. It's just precious. And I want to thank uh, the worship team this morning. They're standing there in the back. Thank you for honoring Jesus the way you do and for leading these people. The, that closing prayer that we were not made to be sorrowful we were not made to be competitive. We were not made to be lonely. We were not made to be insecure. We were made to worship. That just struck me. How beautiful is that to, to meditate on that when all of the things that, that life brings to us that are our frustrations and looking at our own inabilities and our own lack and they can become headliners, can't they? They can become the banner of the day. But to substitute that, I was made to worship. And then this dear brother who prayed for us, thank you. I say a great big amen with all that I have for all that you prayed for us. That the, the blessings and the outpouring grace and mercy and steadfastness and provision and dreams and visions that God has for each one of us are far greater, far greater than any of us could ever ask, hope, dream, or imagine. And to say amen to those things while looking, you know, the Bible says that Abraham, recognizing and seeing that he was old and couldn't do it, looked beyond that to the one who was able to do and so may we, in all of the things that life brings us, all of the challenges that life brings us, look beyond those things to see the one who says, yes, I am faithful. May we always regard him as the greatest and that we live to worship him. Mm. You need a stand. Is there a mic stand? You just get a mic stand here to put this on. Thank you. Blessings, everybody. Uh, you've been standing for a long time, haven't you? You were, anyway. So um, now would you stand up again? <laughs> Folks, you have to be in shape to go to church these days. You saw the worship leader up here. She was just, my goodness. She's going to start a, 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 a dance class for all of us. Amen? <laughs> all right. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I would like for us to um, start with, uh, and maybe sound man, if you could give me just a little bit of my voice in the monitor as well. A song that's taken from, thank you, it's taken from the book of Isaiah in chapter 35, and starts with verse 4. A number of years ago when um, Kathy and I were in a very challenging, very difficult time in our life, I was praying one, one uh, afternoon. <clears throat> And God, and God spoke to me and said, uh, I want you to open my word. Isn't that something? The word of God, it's life to us, isn't it? 
Yeah. And he gave me this scripture. And I would like to sing it with you this morning. And let's prophesy the word of God over the nation of Israel, okay? And there may be some of you here this morning who you're in a very difficult time. I prophesy to you from this, this song that's taken straight from the word of God. Very simple, it says this. Say to those who are fearful hearted, don't you be afraid. The Lord your God is strong and with his mighty arms when you call out his name. It's true, isn't it? He will come and save you. Now let's sing it together. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary one, your God will surely come. He will come and save. Prophesy, church. Say these words. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. Say to those who are brokenhearted, don't lose your faith. Say to those who are brokenhearted, do not lose your faith. Don't give up. Never give up. The Lord your God is strong and with his mighty arm when you call on his name. What's going to happen, church? He will come and save you. Yes, he will. Say it now. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary one, your God will surely come. He will come and save he will come and save you. Yeah. He will come and save you. Yeah. yeah. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save. Amazing word, isn't it? Taken from the book of Isaiah. A prophet raised up to speak to the people of Israel when they were in difficulty. Isn't this like our God? This is our God. When we are struggling, when we feel like we've been abandoned, when we're in literally places of war, spiritual war or otherwise, God says, lift up your eyes. Isn't it an amazing thing that when you're struggling, your head goes down? Shame causes your head to go down. Jesus exchanged our shame for his righteousness. You can lift up your head, church. You can lift up your head. Israel, you can lift up your head. Listen to these words. He's our refuge in the days of trouble. He's our shelter in the times of storm. He's our tower in the days of sorrow, our fortress in the times of war. Yes, say now, He will come. He will come and save you. Yeah. He will come and save you. Say to the weary, your God, your God will surely come. He will come and save. He will come. We declare. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Oh, lift 
lift up your eye. Look up, church. You will arise again. He will come and say. One more time. He's our refuge in the days of trouble. We say, He's our refuge in the day. He's our fortress. Yeah. He's our shelter in the time of storm. He's our tower. He's our tower in the days of our fortress. Our fortress in the times of war. And He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary, your God, He will surely come. Hey, He will come and save you. Yeah. And He will come and save you. He will come and save. Look up, Israel. Look up. Lift up your eyes to Him. You will arise again. And He will come and say, Look up, Dubai. Oh, lift up your eyes to Him. You will arise again. He will come and say, Look up, church. Lift up your eyes to Him. You will arise again. Jesus came to say, you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. The Bible challenges us. It says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad you're in church this morning? Are you sure? <laughs> It's a great thing to be on a basketball court and have it be church. Amen? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Can I teach you a little new song here? Would that be all right? Do you know why we uh, worship on Sunday? In Christianity, why do we worship on Sunday? You know. Yeah, it's the day of resurrection. Mm. Come on. It's resurrection day, guys. So now, you don't have to wait for Easter, you know, to celebrate resurrection. We are every day we wake up. We wake up and say it's resurrection day. But especially on Sunday, that's why we celebrate on Sunday. And it's also a day that we celebrate God saying on the seventh day, it is finished. It's done. It's good. We rest. Everybody take a deep breath. Just, especially all of those who work hard, you know, you businessmen, you business ladies, you mothers, fathers, you know who you are. The Bible says in James, it speaks about that we need to learn to labor to enter the rest. Turn to somebody and say, learn how to rest. Learn how to rest. Now, resting in Christ doesn't mean you don't do anything. No. It means you're at peace in your soul. I rest in your love. My strength comes from you alone. Your grace is more than enough. Amen. A fountain for my thirsty soul. You are everything that I need. My all-sufficient King. So I rest. I rest. In your love. Amen, church. Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And what? I will give you rest. So I rest 
In your love, my strength, my strength comes from you alone. Your grace is more than enough. A fountain for my third. Now let's say it. You're everything. You are everything that I need. Amen. My all-sufficient King. Yes, you are, my Lord. So I rest. I rest in your love. All right, let's declare it. You are everything that I need. We say, you are everything that I need. My all-sufficient King. So I rest, I rest in your love, yeah, yeah. so I rest, I rest in your love. One more time, so I rest, so I rest, I rest. In your love. Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden. On this Sunday morning, Jesus said these words, it is finished. It is done as he laid his life down on that cross. Three days later, he rose and conquered hell and death. And then he reached his arms out to you and me and he said, come. Come with all of your burdens, your fears, your anxieties your stress is everything and I will give you rest in Jesus name Father thank you my Father say with me there is none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do and I could search for all eternity long And find there is no one like you yeah, yeah. There is none like you No one like you, my Lord No one else can touch my heart like you could search for all eternity long and I'd find there is none one more time we declare hey Lord there is none like you no one like you no one else can touch my heart just like you do yeah and I could search for all eternity long And I'd find there is none like Oh, I could search for all eternity long And I'd find just no one like Woo! Jesus, amen Amen. Oh. In the name and in the authority of Jesus, who is the Christ, I speak peace to the church this morning. Peace to every heart that's here today. And as we started our time together of worship, praying for Israel, you know, God is so beautiful and so secure, and He says, yes, I'm taking care of them. Thank you for your prayers. Now He looks at you. You are His Israel. Amen? You are his bride, his beloved bride, and he cares about everything that concerns you this morning. And as Kathy and I stand here before you, a representative from the Father God, all the way from Hawaii, farthest place on the planet from Israel, it's the uttermost parts of the earth God sent us to Dubai to tell you this morning. He is everything that you need. 
He's your all-sufficient King. Say it with me. So I rest. I rest in your love. Thank you, Father. We receive it in your name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Can we do one more song? Is that okay? <clears throat> this is a song that, um, that I wrote in Hawaii, but uh, we've sung it, you know, just all over the world. And uh, I must confess to you, we've sung it in maybe a dozen different languages, but I have not learned Hindi or what is the local language? I, Arabic? I'm sorry, I haven't... We haven't learned that one yet. But that's okay. We can try it in several different Would that be all right? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, let's give glory to our amazing, amazing, amazing God. Here we go. Say glory, glory, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We give you glory, Lord. Hey, hey. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. Yeah, you are the mighty God. Give him glory, church. Sing out glory, glory, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We give you glory, Lord. Hey, hey. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. Yeah, yeah. You are the mighty God. Let's say, you who go down to the sea, you who live in the islands, yeah, if, you, yeah. if you live in Dubai City, everybody lift your voice, lift your voice, hey, and sing it out, say, glory, glory, Lord, yeah, yeah, we give you glory, Lord, hey, hey, glory, glory, Lord. Mighty God, you are the mighty God. Yeah, yeah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise to the ends of the earth. Hey, let every nation tell it in Dubai, everybody. Till every man is heard. Hey, hey, hey. Glory, glory, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty, mighty God. Yeah, hey. You are the mighty God. Now I'll sing it in Hawaiian. Nani, nani, Yehovah. Yeah. No nani, Yehovah. We say, nani, nani, Yehovah. I'll try it. Okay, they're going to put up Samoan. This is a tough one. You go like this. Vi'ia, vi'ia le tua. Mato te vi'ia o le tua. Very good. Vi ia, vi ia le tua, o o le tu mata utia. You did pretty good. O o le tu mata utia. Yeah. You want to try it in in uh, in Spanish? There, there, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just pulling languages out of a hat here. Gloria, gloria a Dios. Te damos gloria a Dios. Se Gloria, gloria a Dios, tú eres poderoso, tú eres poderoso. All right, one more time in English, say, glory, glory, Lord, yeah, yeah. We give you glory, Lord, hey, 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 glory, glory, Lord, you are the mighty God. You are the living God, let's say, you are the living God. You are the only God, amen? You are the only God. Mighty God, we declare, say, you are the mighty God. Hey, yeah. All right, 
I'm sorry. I, I was dishonest. Let's do just one more, okay? Here we go. Say this. Say, hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Say, I will praise you all of my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Say, hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come, yeah. Oh, not my will, but yours be done. Say, glory, glory to the Lamb. You take me into the land. Say, we will honor Jesus' name. Oh, we will honor Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh, and proclaim that Jesus reigns. Say, hey. Say it. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Yeah. How wonderful you are. Yeah. Oh, say it. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. And how powerful you are. Oh, how, how powerful you are. Here we go. Say glory, glory to the Lamb. You take me into the land. We will honor, we will honor Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh, and proclaim that Jesus reigns. Oh, hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Let me hear how wonderful you are. Said a hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Yeah, how wonderful you are. Said a how powerful you are. Yeah. Said. And how wonderful you are. Last one, how powerful. And how powerful you are. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Amen. Amen, Lord Jesus. How wonderful you are. Amen. Oh, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you. You are enthroned upon the praises of his people. This house is your throne room this morning. And so, Lord Jesus, receive the offerings of praise that we brought you all this morning, the offerings of our finances that we've brought to you. And Father, we believe you that as we bring these offerings to you, your giving is so much greater than anything we give to you, Father. It is not that we love you, but that you have first loved us. And so because of that, we gather in your name today. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen. amen. Wow. <laughs> well, beloved, you can, you can take a seat, and uh, yeah. It's such a blessing to have Kathy... Uh, uh, Kathy and I get the chance to worship together on stage because for many years uh, when my children, our children, were uh, small, Kathy stayed home and was, a, was an awesome, faithful, loving mother. And uh, so because of that, we have some amazing kids that um, I'm sure you're proud of your children, aren't you folks? We are because... God made us in his image, and the amazing thing is that he's a creator, and he made us in his image, and as such, we are able to create human beings. Isn't that amazing? Human beings that come from us, it's, it's like God, and uh, God has made us like that, and so our children are a treasure to us, and we are grateful to our Father God <clears throat> for that. This morning, <clears throat> Pastor is very graciously um, allowed Kathy and I to lead worship and also asked me to share a word with you. Is that okay with you guys? <clears throat> I, um, I sometimes think, you know, for, for myself that when I get up here and, and lead worship and, and then people ask me 
to share as well. I, I, I feel a little embarrassed and I think, you know, after a while people are going, man, oh man, when is this guy going to shut up? But, uh, but it's true, isn't it, Pastor? You know, when we are under the anointing of God, yeah, we can just go on and on and on, can't we? It's just because God is good. God is good. And every one of you have a destiny. I want to say that to you in terms of being a minister for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of you. God has a favor and anointing on. Isaiah 43.10 says this. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen. Ooh, say it to each other. You are my witnesses. Yeah, go ahead. Prophesy to each other. You're my witnesses and my servant whom I've chosen. <clears throat> Isn't that awesome? God himself has appointed us. And so it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing when we step out in faith to serve him that God chooses to use simple people like ourselves. And, uh, and he fills these earthen vessels with an amazing treasure the kingdom of God. Amen, church. I pray this morning that you will leave here having been in the throne room of God, that you'll leave here with a crown, if you know what I'm saying. You know, we cast our crowns at his feet, but the amazing thing about Jesus, he says, you know what? I'm just going to crown you with my anointing. And we leave the throne room with fresh anointing to do what God has called you to do. Businessmen, businesswomen, those of you here are teachers, uh, housewives, uh, who, whatever your destiny is in God, you leave here this morning with a fresh crown of anointing from the Father God to do what God has called you to do. And so I want to speak with you just briefly this morning in the time that we have left um, about building the house of God in worship. This is uh, something that we feel God has called us to do around the world, to work ourselves out of a job. Our calling is to impart to each one of you, a fresh sense of destiny and worship. And so prepare your hearts. I pray that the Holy Spirit will prepare your heart this morning to be freshly endued with that anointing as a worshiper. Now, you don't have to be a great singer to be a worshiper. Now, obviously, if you are tone deaf and you, and you don't have a voice, you're probably not going to be a worship leader. Okay, we understand that. And, you know, if your timing is all off and, you, and that's not your gifting in music, then you, you probably won't be in the worship band. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. And we sang it so beautifully. Thank you, worship team. You did a great job. But that song that we sang is, I'm a worshiper. I'm, this is my, my, my destiny. It's my calling. Every one of you have that destiny. And so that's what we want to do is to help you have that. So there's several things as we start this morning that I would like to... Um, just read to you scriptures. I'll start with uh, the book of Galatians chapter 5. And um, yeah, we can, we can all, if you have Bibles with you, you can turn there or, or just I can read it for you. Verse 22, <clears throat> and I'll read this for you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, thank you, brother, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control and against such there is no law. When we come together in the presence of God and we are endued with the power of the Holy Spirit, one of the most amazing things that God blesses us with in this new life in Christ, he's, he's, he doesn't say to us, all right, you're my child, now get out there and live the life. Do your best. You know, and there's a lot, of, a lot of teachings today in Christianity that somehow put so much emphasis on, um, on, on just you making the right choices. Now, we understand that's important, but you know what? God didn't tell you to be his follower and didn't give you all that you need. You are everything that I need. God has given you all of the giftings that you will need to do what God has called you to do. So in Galatians chapter 5, it says, all of these fruits... So count on it. As a believer, with that crown of anointing on you, God is given you all that you need. Amen? To do what you're called to do. He's given it to you. And so it's, you know, you know being a Christian is not about just gritting your teeth and going, okay, I can do this, you know. I just got to make all the right choices and, and obey God at all times and pray more and worship more. You know, uh, 
I, my pastor says this, you know, when people tell you to pray hard, what does that mean? Pray hard. Uh, you know, uh, you know, there's some people who think that that's what praying hard is. No, actually, the Bible uh, talks about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. What it means is, actually, what that's talking about is the prayer of faith. So coming to God when you pray, it's not about, ah, you know, and worship leaders, too, and worshipers. Um, <clears throat> God isn't deaf. He, he you know, I, I, there's, a, there's a good thing about shouting. In fact, on the count of three, let's all shout to Jesus. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> I caught you off guard there. On the count of three, let's lift a shout. Because the Bible says, shout to God. You ready? One, two, three. Woo! Amen. So shouting is a good thing. But, but in worship, shouting doesn't mean you're more passionate. And so a lot of times if you hear worship leaders saying, come on, you guys, come on, what's wrong with you? Um, you just need to be careful about that because, because um, the passion comes from within. Yeah? Worship doesn't have to be whooped up, worship leaders. You don't have to, you know, what I call Texas worship, pull out the bull whip and herd in the cattle, you know. That's not what we're doing as worship leaders. You know what we're doing? We're saying, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Isn't he great? The more you look at Jesus, the more the passion arises. And shouting will not be something that you have to be necessarily uh, 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 pushed to do. It'll be because your heart goes, Jesus, you're so amazing. Amen? And so <clears throat> this morning, let me give you just a few statements, as I mentioned to you. And just listen to these because they're quite wordy. And uh, bear with me for just a moment. And this is just about how God builds the house of worship. The Bible is full of stories about God using people who had less than stellar character and who were people of passionate worship and influence for God's kingdom. We all know the disciples were just normal guys like you and I. Peter, you know, he had problems with his mouth. He was constantly... You know, just talking out of turn. And you know, so the, the gamut was covered with the disciples, wasn't it? All kinds of different personalities. But God, the Bible is full of stories of God saying, I choose you. Not because you're a great singer. Not because you're a great uh, uh, whatever you are. It's because I just choose you. You are my witnesses. God loves taking just simple people like us and saying, watch me. I'll transform you into a nation changer. Let me hear an amen on that one. A nation changer. <clears throat> Number two. Indications are that even after their choice to follow God, many still displayed serious char character flaws. Is that true of you? When you became a believer, were you perfect after that? <laughs> Some were a little more loud on that, you know. Yeah, it's true. We, we all recognize that, you know, that after we became believers in Christ, we still made mistakes. The beautiful thing of the gospel, beloved, look at me just for a second. I need you to see this, to remind you what the gospel is. The gospel is not about us, and we sang it in our worship this morning. Again, thank you, team. We talked about it's about him and what he has done for us. And so, beloved, Jesus, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made him who knew no sin to become sin, that you might become the righteousness of God. Every day, beloved church, know this, even after you become a believer, put on your robes of righteousness. Who made those robes? Jesus, not you, not me. So know this, when you falter, Come before the Father and say, Father, thank you. Thank you that you have clothed me in your righteousness. That the blood of Jesus covers my failures. That is the gospel. That is the, it is good news. And you will walk out of here today and you will walk through the streets of this beautiful city and you will have on your lips, thank you, Father. I walk holy and complete before you because I wear the robes you gave me 
with those words, it is finished. Doesn't that feel good? And all day long, the devil's going to tell you, oh, you call, your, you call yourself a Christian. Look what you just said. Look what you just thought. Look what you just did. What's his name? The accuser of the brethren. You know who Jesus is? He is the redeemer of the church. That's going to make your worship just rise, church. Because you will walk in here not feeling guilty and ashamed. You will walk in every Sunday feeling righteous before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And boy, doesn't that make you want to worship? It sure does. Amen. And so indications, it's just true. This is the fact. Even after we make the choice to follow Jesus, yes, we will falter, but the blood of Jesus is our only banner. It's our banner that we are forgiven. Number three, the development of character is a lifelong process and one that every Christian experiences. There are no saints that are not such by their own, that are such by their own behavioral record. You know why we are saints? Because of Jesus. He has made you saints. There's no saints in here because you did, you did it all right. And if you are, uh, well, let's just put, you're not. <laughs> Amen? It is because of the cross that we stand whole and righteous. Right? Amen? Oh, isn't this, this is, it, it excites me because I, I realize how frail I am as a human being. And the longer we live, in, the more we realize, wow, God, you chose me? Wow, amazing. Number four, the scripture suggests that leadership has some level of expected character development. The idea that only people of good character qualify for leadership flies in the face of Jesus' example of choosing 12 flawed disciples. So what I want to say to you, my expectation and, and God's expectation for every one of you, God has a role of leadership for every one of you. And the pastor said, the pastor knows his purpose as a leader is to work himself out of a job. That's the purpose of every worship leader. Multiply. Mm. Some of you, and I'm prophesying here, some of you are going to change the destiny of nations. Look around you. Look around you, church. My brother-in-law, <clears throat> he's a drummer, and he used to play in a praise band. And he came to me one day and he said, Bob, you know, I just really, I, I feel so... Uh, he's also an artist. And uh, his job was as an artist, but he was playing in the praise band on Sunday. And he said, I just want to, I want to step out and worship more. I feel like God wants to use me, you know, more. And, and, and I don't know, pray for me. And so I prayed for him, uh, you know. And, and uh, the next week, or not, not long after we prayed together, um, he got a, an invitation, because he's an artist, to, to do some helmets for, do you remember the movie Top Gun? So he, he painted the, the, tel the helmets for, for Top Gun, and, and wow, you know, everybody, they liked it so much that, that some guys in Hollywood took note of him. And he found out, he got this call from Hollywood, and they said, hey, uh, his name was Mark, he said, hey, Mark, um, there's a new movie that's coming out, there's this, there's this star, his name is Kevin Costner, and, there, and he is looking for a double for a movie that he's making, and we heard that you play tennis, could you come and why don't you come and try out for the job as a, as a double for Kevin Costner? So he said, why not, you know? So he goes in, plays a little tennis, so on and so forth. He gets a call from Hollywood. They said, you're the man. So now, a week or two after he prays, God, Lord, I want to step up in leadership in my life. Lord, show me where I'm going. Give me my destiny. Do you know, that story I'm telling you was how many years ago? That was... 30, 30 years ago, he is still Kevin Costner's double. And, and Kevin Costner is a believer. And when he became a famous movie star in Hollywood, his mom, who's a praying mother, said, Jesus, send people to him. Send Christians around him. <clears throat> 
God answered her prayer. And God sent my brother-in-law to be literally right beside of him. I want to say to you folks, you never know who's sitting next to you. Whose double is sitting next to you? <laughs> kidding, kidding. You, you, you never know what, what destiny sits right next to you, right? Amen? Look around, go ahead and look around you and say, hmm, there's some people of destiny. There's some leaders right there. And you think I'm joking? I am not. I am telling you, you, this church today, you got a crown, you got an anointing on you folks, given to you by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And God is going to usher you before kings and queens, and you are going to influence him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me hear an amen on that, folks. Oh, yes. Amen. And here's the final statement that I'll make, and then I'll just share a few more things before we close. This final statement, the analogy of fruit, as we read in Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, as a representative character in the New Testament is evidence of the fact that character is grown over a period of time. Fruit just doesn't go, it's grown over a period of time. And that there are seasons of growth throughout our lives. Folks, you have eternity. You are going to live forever. People over 25 or 30, stop talking about I'm getting old. All right? If you, let me, who, how many of you are over 50 this morning? Raise your hands boldly. <laughs> you see the hands going, uh, not really sure. <laughs> yeah. How many of you are under 50? Oh, this is good. You've got, a, you've got a, a new generation coming in. All right, here comes the real test. We're going to do a shout now, this time, between the generations. Okay, you ready? I'm going to give the older folks, uh, uh, they're going to come last just to give them a little warm-up period, okay? So over all of you under 50, on the count of three, if you are awesome in love with Jesus, yeah, I'm not going to say. She wants to know, what, what's the percentage? I, she says it's an unfair advantage. I think it's good for us over 50 years. We need that challenge, don't we, over 50? Silence. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. You ready? Under 50s, on the count of three, you're in love with Jesus. Lift your voice for the king. One... Two, three! You know, Pastor, that just means we've done our job. Amen? All right? Okay. Now, we've given the, the um, over 50s a warm-up period. It, it just, it, it kind of goes with the territory. Okay, so over 50s on the count of three. One, two, three! Come on. Hello. <laughs> See, over 50s, you get a prize at the door when you leave. No, 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 no. kidding, kidding. Okay, so, so here's what, what I want to say to you, I suppose, <laughs> is it's important for everybody to realize the process of God's developing you is a lifelong process. Amen? Fruit, you know, you don't just go, ah, and out pops the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Uh-uh. Just be. Be who you are. Christ is in you. Relax, church. Relax and be. Just be who you are. God's Holy Spirit will help you walk through your weaknesses. Amen? He will, he will faithfully not condemn you. He will faithfully say, oh, no, 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 that's not, your, that's not who you are. That's not who you are. That anger, that's not who you are. You know, that, 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 uh, that uh, being dishonest, that, that is not your character. He will not condemn you. The devil will condemn you. The devil will say, ooh, you, you are not a Christian. Look at you. You had this thought. That, beloved, do not listen to the condemner. There is therefore now 
no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Say it with me. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus covers you, church. Now you may say, what does all this have to do with worship? Everything. Because I don't have to teach you how to sing a song to be a worshiper. I teach you how to celebrate your life in Christ. And the song will come out your mouth. Mm. Amen? That's where songs come from. Not from people telling you you need to sing. It comes from you saying, look at my Savior. Look what he does for me every day. The song, I love you, Lord, and I lift to worship you, O my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let me be a sweet Sweet sound in your You know who wrote that song? A housewife who was sitting in the kitchen washing the dishes, thanking Jesus for who he was to her. And as she washed the dishes, she said, I love you, Lord. Now that song has gone all around the world. Worship comes from your life. It comes from your life in Christ. That's why I'm talking about this today. You are going to live forever, church. The moment you became a believer, you stepped into eternity. You will never die. Come on now, yeehaw. Is that a good thing? You will cease to breathe on this earth. The New Testament referred to it as going to sleep. You will just go to sleep, but you will never, ever taste death because Jesus took it for you. Woo! Woo! You're going to live forever, church. And forever, this, this God in this lifetime is, is fine-tuning those beautiful fruits in your life. Get excited about who you are, each one of you. You're all different you have a different song. You have unique giftings from God. Don't try to be somebody else. Let you be you. You are a unique creation in God, and God loves who you are. Amen? All right. You know, I, I, was, I was a little uh, premature. There is one more statement that I want to read for you. Can I do that real quick? And, and real quickly here. The um, final characteristic... Uh, is this. The characteristic of any leader should revolve around the fruit of the Holy Spirit with the greatest emphasis placed on the three components mentioned by the Apostle Paul in his dealings with the church riddled with character flaws. The church in Corinth had all kinds of problems. And Paul said to them, what three things are the most three most important things that we should focus on in our in, our, in the fruit of our, of the Spirit. Love, first most important. I know, the three most important ones. Love, faith, and hope. Mm. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these. This is what they're going to say about the church in Dubai. Not that they're good singers, Maybe they'll say that. Not that they're good songwriters. Maybe they'll say that. This is what they'll say. Behold how they love one another. Behold how they... You know what? Worship leaders, check it out. The more you worship Jesus, the more you love the church. You believe that? Isn't it great how when the grace of God pours over us and we're singing songs of love to Jesus and you look around, you see the people of God. Kathy and I, when we lead worship, we, we look out on the crowd. You look good. 
When the grace of God is all over and you're worshiping, the glory of God comes on you. The bride of Christ, you are clothed in righteousness. I am telling you, you are a city on a hill. You are the salt of the earth. You are the answer to every problem in Dubai. Come on. <clears throat> yeah? Hey, how about we make it a little bigger? You're the answer to every problem in the Middle East. Mm, come on. You are the answer to every problem in America. You are the answer to every problem in Asia, in Africa, this entire globe. You are the answer, church. You are the light of Christ in this earth. Don't forget your identity, okay? Don't forget who you are. You are Christ on this earth, the Savior. Amen. And so God says, focus on these three things. How are you doing, folks? Can we, can we do just, just a little bit more? Are you doing all right? You're being very, very patient. All right. But before I go there, let me just say this. You cannot say you love God and hate your brethren. It just doesn't work. You can't do it. And my wife and I recently had a situation where a Christian brother just turned on us for, for no reason at all, calling us all kinds of names and just, uh, 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 we, we were shocked. This is a good friend of ours. <clears throat> and for some reason, something happened and he, he lost it. You're going to experience that, church. There will be times when that happens. Don't respond in kind. When I, when I, I was weeping when I got the note from this brother. I just cried. I was in the airport when I got this crazy letter. And I just started weeping. And, and I, wrote to, I wrote a note to him. And just the Holy Spirit came all over me. And I said, because he said, never talk to me again. And I said, my brother, I, I don't want to do this, but I, I will abide by your request. But, and I wrote in capital letters, I love you. You respond. Church, yes, you will experience challenges in your relationships. It happens. Love conquers it all. Amen. So whatever happens when people unjustly accuse you or things take place, you respond in the opposite spirit and say, you know what? I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. All right. Quickly here. Three things. Faith, hope, and love. Number one, faith. I want to um, <clears throat> speak to you about the, these last three things. Faith is one of the most important aspects of our, of our walk in Christ. So as God is building you, consistently be in the place of saying, Father God, what's my next step? What's my, lead me, Father God. Shepherd, lead me, Father. And he's leading you today, isn't he? You're not, you're not here by accident. You are here today because God led you here. Uh, it's true. There's destiny. Somehow you were supposed to be here today. And, and God's doing so. He's seeding something in your heart. And maybe it's this. If nothing else, it's this. Steps of faith. God is saying to you, when you, follow, when you are worshiping God, here's what God's going to do. He's going to awaken dreams in your heart. He's going to awaken dreams. Amen? When I was just a kid, God put in me, as a young believer, the desire to sing and to write songs and worship. And I remember when I did my first cassette. Do you remember those? How many do not know what a cassette is? <laughs> a little kid in the back row. What's, what's that? <laughs> no, okay. So my first recording was a cassette. I played it for a friend of mine. <clears throat> and he... He got all blessed, and he was, oh, God. And he started praying for me. And he goes, Pa, 
Bob, I'm going to pray for you. And he starts prophesying, you know, in the name of Jesus. You know, he got, you know how sometimes when they're, people are really mild and then, they, then when they start praying, man, man, they become like, it's like a, like a prayer vampire. They sud suddenly change and go, wah, you know, they get the power of God all over them and start praying. And he starts prophesying, you're going to stand in front of thousands of people and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in stadiums. And, and my heart, folks, you know what happened? I laughed. Story of Abraham and Sarah. What did she do? You're going to have a baby. <laughs> really? Do you know who I am? It's going to happen to you. Because remember this, it's not your faith, it's God seeding the dreams in you. Amen? It's not you going, I believe, I believe, I believe. You know, no, no, look at Jesus and what happens, you just follow him. Follow him and watch. He will give you dreams that are far bigger than you've ever dreamed, church. And so, you know, I laughed. Aren't you glad that God is faithful when we are faithless? Let's say that together. God is faithful when we are faithless. Yay. So, a few years later, I was invited, Kathy and I were invited to be at a gathering at Seoul Olympic Stadium with 80,000 Koreans. And I stood on the stage and I watched 80,000 Koreans singing, Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, in Korean. And I listened to that, and I began to weep. And the Father said to me, the Holy Spirit whispered to me, Son, I am faithful. I told you so. Whew. You ready? Let God give you new steps of faith, church. Amen? Amen. Amen. You ready? Hey, this is, this is, this is a beginning of something fresh and new. I believe for your church and your worship team and for this house of God here. Amen. Number two, hope. Let me give you a different definition of hope. Hope is the confident expectation of good. Hope is the confident expectation of good. Today, church, God is awakening that in your spirit. You can even sense it now as we're sharing together. A confident expectation of good ahead of you. And I prophesy that over you today, that God is giving fresh hope to you. Hope is not like, oh, I hope it happens, I hope it happens. In Christ, hope is this. I know it will happen. I know it will happen. I am confident that my best days are yet ahead. Say it with me. The best is yet to come. The best is yet. Amen. One more time. The best is yet to come. Woo! <laughs> and those of you over 50, don't let people tell you, oh, you know, you hit 50, you start going, Whoo! you know, don't. Don't listen to that. Over 50s. The best is yet to come. Yes. Amen. Over 50s, raise your hand. Now somebody under 50 around them, tell them the best is yet to come. <laughs> yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. And then this last one, and then we'll, we'll sing a song, and I'll turn it back over to Pastor. And that is this. Love. Wow. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is, is to read to you the passage that we all are very familiar with, aren't we? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And if you want, you can turn in your Bibles to this passage. And I'll read it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love... I'm a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind 
Love doesn't envy or boast, and it's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. Boy, Lord Jesus, I'm learning. <laughs> it's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Do you hear that? Are you afraid of the future? I mean, sometimes you read the news and you look at all the stuff going on in the world today and sometimes our heart tremble and God says, love endures all things. Love never, never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. But we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. My friend Lauren Cunningham, as my brother said just two days ago, face to face with Jesus. Wow. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest, say it with me, the greatest of these is love. Let's all stand together, church. <clears throat> Amen. Wow. You know why worship is such a strong foundation for any church? Do you know why I spoke so much about these things today, about character and about what God is doing in your life? It's because of this, that love encompasses it all. That in the end, what is the source of passionate worship in your church? It is love. The Bible says this, it is not that we love God, but that He loves us. Every time you walk through that door, Remember this, you are loved. And, and if I could give a challenge to all of the greeters, when people walk through the door in your church, grab them and say, you are loved by God. You are loved by God. I'll tell you what, when people walk into a house like that, you think they're going to worship? They will. I'm going to ask Kathy to come on up. And we'll close with this song. <clears throat> and if I can ask you all to do something as an expression of your love for one another, now, in Indian culture, do you, is it okay to hold hands? Is, that, is it okay? It's okay? Some of you are going, eh. <laughs> You're not sure, huh? Well, let's do this. I would love for you to join hands across the aisle as one voice. Yeah, all across, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, we love you so much. Come see us in Hawaii, huh? <laughs> they're all they're all silent. Yeah, you need to come visit Hawaii. Amen. But just don't come to my house. <laughs> Go to a hotel, but <laughs> just, no. Amen. Isn't this good? We're gonna do this forever. Are you glad about that? Yeah. Heck yeah. Let me tell you about that song. I wrote it in a little shack in Hawaii. It was a rat infested shack. Rats running around everywhere and pastor of a local church said, Bob, would you come lead us in worship one day? And I tried to think of a song and couldn't come up with one and I just said, Lord, give me a song. <laughs> And while the rats were doing trapeze acts over my head, the Holy Spirit settled on me and gave me these words. Let's worship our Father. Father in heaven, how we love you. Let's do it, church. We lift your name in all the earth. 
May your kingdom be established in our praises. Amen. As your people, we declare your mighty works. Let's say it. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and, and is to come. Yeah, Lord. Blessed be my Lord, my God Almighty, who reigns, who reigns forever. Father of mercy, be exalted. Father of mercy, be exalted. May Jesus' name be lifted high. May Jesus' name be lifted high. For his sacrifice of love has won my pardon. For his sacrifice of love has won my... And his resurrection power gives me life. It's Sunday. And his resurrection power gives me life. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is, who was and is and is. Come, say, blessed be my Lord, oh my God Almighty, who reigns, uh, who reigns. All right, church, you can let go of your hands and lift them to the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, my God Almighty. Is. Yeah, he's coming back, church. Blessed be the Lord, my God Almighty. We declare it. Who reigns forevermore? Yeah. Who reigns for? Oh, let's declare it. Say it over Dubai. Who reigns? Yeah. Who reigns? Forevermore. Yeah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for letting Kathy and I come and be with you. It's truly an honor, and really, we do welcome you. You know, the uttermost parts of the earth, this earth belongs to our Father. Let's fill it with His praise. Amen. Please be seated for a moment as we go with the benediction. Um, today evening, uh, Bob and his wife, Kathy, and along with our friend, Benny Prasad, they'll be performing in JSS Hall. Uh, if you happen to, uh, please catch up this moment, uh, this evening, that is today, Sunday evening at JSS Hall, JSS School Hall, they'll be ministering. And I believe that the Lord is going to fill this earth with his glory. Amen. Amen. You know, the... Uh, we just want to thank the Lord for the opportunity and for the freedom that we have to worship the Lord in this land openly and lifting the name of Jesus Christ. And as they come up in a prophetic way to lead the worship and to sing songs, I, let's pray together that today evening this would be a holy moment that the heavens come down and that the people will worship and lift the name as we sang this song that blessed be the name of the Lord Almighty forever and ever and ever. Right? Can we just stretch forth our hands towards them and let's pray that the Lord will anoint them powerfully this evening and that they will sing songs and the heavens will come down in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to rejoice with your people here. We want to thank you, Father, for all that you are doing in our lives, so Father Lord. We thank you for sending your servant Bob and his wife Kathy to our midst, O oh Lord, that they minister to us so powerfully this day to remind us, Lord, that three things remains love hope and faith and above everything is love and we pray god that you may bless each one of us give us a heart of humility that we will understand the love of the father and lord that we will bear with one another we will love one another especially we pray for the bob and the team lord as they sing this evening 
We pray, God, that you may shake the foundations. And Lord, let there be anointing, the presence of God, so powerful and tangible in today's event, O Father Lord, that you may bless him, anoint him, every word that comes out of his mouth. May, Father Lord, he bring healing, restoration, joy. And Lord, let this be a joy to this city, Lord. We pray that you may bless them. We pray for good health upon them, protect them from, from all pollens or viruses or even all diseases and all accidents, incidents. Protect them, O oh Father Lord. And Lord, keep them safe under your wings. We bless them. Thank you for sending your servant. And we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we just all arise and go with the benediction? Now may the love of God, grace and mercy of Jesus, Sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, enable each one of us that we will love as the Lord loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Put our hands together for the Lord.